Okay, welcome back to theCUBE. This is SiliconANGLE's flagship program. We've got the advanced extractive ceiling from the nose. I'm John Furrier at SiliconANGLE. I'm joined on this segment with David Floyer, co-founder of Wikibon.org, chief technology officer of Wikibon, and our, one of our favorite guests, uh, I think he made his CUBE de uh, debut two years ago here at Oracle Open World, Brian Bukowski, uh, founder of Aerospike. Welcome back. Great, thanks so, to be here. So, uh, in memory, um, what, a, what a great uh, focus for Oracle to be talking about in memory and uh, uh, big focus. What's your take on this? Obviously, you're in the. In, oh, what's in what's the my <laughs> take on it? I mean, are you kidding? <laughs> of I've course, we've been huge promo <laughs> proponents of in memory from the day we founded Aerospike. Yeah. So we saw it uh, four or five years ago that rotational disk. You know, it, it, the writing was on the wall that. Uh, it just, it was going to have a niche, and that niche was going to be decreasing. What we saw at the Flash Memory Summit um, a month ago uh, from Samsung and Intel's roadmap as well is staggering, and you know, the writing's clearly on the wall now. Um, rotational has a smaller and smaller role to play, and well-crafted software can really take advantage of in-memory computing, not just for key value store usage, but also not just for fast analytics, but really for both. I wanted to bring that up in kind of tongue-in-cheek because you know, one of the reasons why we, we wanted to bring you on theCUBE early on was you were really early uh, as one of the lead companies pioneering a lot of the in-memory when everyone else is kind of over the side. Um, and so props to you guys, congratulations to Aerospike for doing that. Um, but in all seriousness now, the debate we had earlier on with Dave on theCUBE here was, how early are we? Are we in midstream or it's, is it still early? Because Oracle's known to coming to the party a little bit just in time or late enough to be there. Uh, what's your take? And I also want to get David Floyd's take on that as well. Yeah. Well, uh, let, let me ask the question slightly differently. Uh, uh, are they going to freeze the market for people like you with this uh, grand vision of everything working together and everything being under Oracle with you know, the data stream processing and the analytic processing and the transactional processing and the big data processing? It's a big, big vision. Uh, is that going to freeze the market for you or is that going to validate the market for you? So I believe the it validates the market for us. Uh, we've been beating Oracle NoSQL in the field with customers for nearly a year and a half now. And that's based on our price, based on performance, based on not wanting to deal with Oracle salespeople, based on the uptime and reliability we have. Reliability is huge. Once you have customers like we do, running thousands of SSDs and large scale deployments with zero downtime and you know, tens and uh, hundreds of uh, terabytes of storage, um, you know, that's the kind of um, lead that we have in terms of actually being out there in the marketplace. So Oracle is, you know, I think is also, as you're saying, perhaps just about in time, right? They've caught along on with this uh, at a point where uh, folks are really starting to say, hey, what about that NoSQL stuff? I really got to learn about and uh, the power that in-memory flash computing can bring. Um, and start, start to actually use it. So, you know, I, I think they're, they're hitting the market at a decent point, uh, which their product was a little bit better. Um, but uh, well, we, they, they'll get there eventually, much, right? We, we don't know much about it yet, do we? <laughs> uh, well, it's been out there. Yeah. Right, well, so yeah, Oracle NoSQL's yeah. been out there. They finally yeah. have their JSON interface, and uh, right. you know, we'll see how it does. But um, uh, what about other approaches? Uh, the, if you look at uh, big data this year, um, it's, it's amazing the number of SQL people that have come to the table. And uh, people like Clustrix, who've got a very nice story with, uh, with a, uh, a flash, a similar flash architecture to yourself, who are going down the SQL path. Uh, their reasoning being is that we can, we can make it almost as good as, uh, as no, no SQL, and that the uh, programming is simpler, and it's just easier to implement, and it's easier to find the talent to do that. And they'd rather, especially in the enterprise space, not leave uh, tidying up uh, NoSQL no uh, uh, out-of-line situations to the programmer, they'd like the database to do that. But uh, any comments on that? Is, uh, do you see that as a threat, or again, do you see that as a, as a broadening of the marketplace? So the experience I've had when talking to enterprise customers who have a lot of in installed based SQL is that at some point they have to bite the bullet about whether they're going to stick with that SQL environment, SQL programmers, or jump to an environment where they've got some Hadoop and they've got some NoSQL, right? And what I see is that at some point it's really, really hard to make that SQL scale for a bunch of reasons. And Oracle is finally getting past some of the simple implementation problems that they've had with NoSQL uh, with their SQL implementation, right, and getting on the board with Flash and, and their Flash analytics, but they've still got the problem where you can express things in SQL, SQL is extraordinarily powerful, such as these large scale joins that simply will never scale with that kind of expression, where it's very simple and everyone knows now how to build a Hadoop 
cluster and how to build a NoSQL system that worked properly. So David, I want to get your take on, on Oracle's move. What's your assessment of the in-memory uh, take? So, um, my, my assessment of this, uh, uh, the whole Oracle strategy, is that they want to carve out a single, uh, a single platform, uh, both from a hardware point of view and a software point of view, and integrate everything as much as they can. There's clearly a lot of uh, SQL customers that they have. There's clearly a requirement in some organizations, not for the level of data streaming requirement that, that many of the, uh, the, the web-based people have, but for, for web streaming of some sort, streaming of some sort, not quite the same level. They'd like to integrate that in with analytics, do that in near real time, get that moving into it. There's clearly a demand now for that end-to-end -end type of system going in. And if they can make it work, and if they can make it attractive, and if they can package it up in a way that minimizes the cost of maintenance, et cetera, they will take a chunk of that market. But it's all going to be about execution uh, over the next two or three years. They can probably hold people off for two years, but beyond that, they, people will have to move. So I, I think the next three years is going to be a very interesting time in the Oracle base. <clears throat> so I already see that there are plenty of folks who are out there building large Hadoop clusters and figuring out what to put in front of it. Um, I think some of the most in innovative work I'm seeing right now outside of the advertising industry is within both security and that there's a lot of different kinds of security out there, right? So there's transactional security for banking, um, there's fraud in advertising, there's fraud in online gaming, there's really fraud everywhere you look. <laughs> and you know, once there's money, there's fraud, right? So um, the, the ability to put together a Hadoop cluster that is looking for the big picture patterns, uh, if I see this, that probably means fraud, and then have a, 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 a real time um, flash-oriented NoSQL database really on the front side looking at every single moment of what's going on. That's what I see really winning the fraud battle. And, you know, SQL was what people used in fraud. You know, uh, still I would say 80% of the market's using it. But those companies that are out there and have placed to bet on Hadoop are doing so much better job in detecting fraud at a reasonable price um, it's hard, I think, for an architect right now to say, I'm starting a new project, I don't have a SQL base, I'm going to build this whole thing on SQL. People don't do that. They just start with Hadoop these days, and then they put a fast database in front of it. That is the architecture right now, if you do not have legacy code. I, I, I think that's very fair, um, but there are also people that are going to come the other way. Uh, not, not starting with that problem, starting with their, uh, their traditional system and wanting to add on the fraud detection and other things to that in a, in a, in a way. And, and the, the challenge of some, uh, some industry is you can lose a piece of data and it doesn't matter. You know, if you lose a bit of web data, it's not the end of the world. If you lose... Well, if, well, if, if, if I'm playing if, a game if and I just spent two hours getting my little <laughs> pony in Zynga and I lost my pony, don't tell me I'm not important. Dude, my pony. Come on. Just right. the web? If, if I lose the data and... Um, if I lose um, a penny in my bank account, that yeah, doesn't matter either. Well, uh, if, you, if, you, if you don't reconcile properly in your bank, then well, there are big uh, Look, the big other fines. point that yeah. people forget is banks don't really use SQL for their mainline transaction processing either. SQL isn't considered to be reliable enough. They use things like XA transactions, they have yep. multiple transaction right. workflows, and their databases make mistakes, and then they go back and reconcile them. So even in those systems, they really look a lot more like IMS, and they look a lot more like what we now call NoSQL than they do a traditional SQL store. That's the highest level of reliability is what one analyst at uh, JP Morgan called for me, uh, pre-SQL. We use pre-SQL, and that's what's reliable. So what's up, give us the update on uh, Aerospike, what's happening, guys, you have a new CEO, what else is new? Um, so things are, things are going very, very well, John. So uh, at Aerospike, we recently released Aerospike 3, so that has secondary index capability, real-time MapReduce, so being able to MapReduce in uh, millisecond range times over decent sets of data, uh, use, combining both the ability to index and the ability to run MapReduce over it. So not just getting your fast user data storage, but also the ability to do analytics on top of it with all of our usual capabilities in terms of uh, flash support and flash integration with people like uh, Violin and Fusion IO, who I guess were guests here earlier, as well as Intel, Samsung, uh, Micron, all the usual suspects. 
uh, what else is around the horizon for this industry that you see that uh, you guys are working on that you think are, as a startup, you're always at the front lines. What, what do you see around the corner? So um, right now, concurrent with this, is the High Performance Transaction Processing Symposium. Um, uh, and those guys, uh, there's a very interesting talk there earlier today about the future of data centers and data center integration. And um, the entire idea that we can use much faster interconnect technology to build faster and better distributed systems, whether it be PCIe, there's different forms of new fast ethernet, uh, going way beyond InfiniBand, uh, that's going to really change the nature of distributed systems and allow us to build things we've never built before. When you start looking at uh, five, four to five microsecond response times between systems and whole data center distributed systems as opposed to these computer things, uh, it's a whole new world. So that'll be rolling out, that's, that's pretty far looking, that'll happen probably over the next three or four years. Uh, honestly, we just have, the entire industry has to uh, adjust to and digest what's happening here at Oracle Open World and being able to uh, bring together NoSQL, figure out how, how my SQL and NoSQL play together, how Hadoop works together. That's going to take us a few years. David Floyer, I'll let you get the final word in. Software-led infrastructure, IO-centric infrastructure, going back to your early work. What are you working on right now? What are you watching in this space on the infrastructure side? Well, the, the thing that I'm watching is very much what uh, Brian was talking about, the potential of uh, putting together systems of such size and potential amount of data that they cover, that they offer ability to uh, design systems in a completely different way. Uh, absolutely design systems with huge amounts of data, uh, take out cost from the infrastructure of organizations, make single copies of data a reality uh, in, the, in the marketplace, ma making them both a, 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 a a databases of record as well as uh, databases of anal analytics as well. I, I think that the amount of change that's going on in the industry at the moment, when you consider that memory is changing, when you consider that the internet interconnect is changing, when you consider that the amount of processing power is changing, we've never seen such an enormous influx of change and capability and innovation that's happening in the industry at the moment. It's, it, it, it's as if the the uh, the dead weights of the disk technology, which was pretty well holding everything back, are finally the finally falling dead off. Weight I of like disc, that. The dead weight of disk technology that's been holding everything back, as David Floyd says, in memory, flash, persistent, changing the software game is all about the software. This is the Cube live coverage from San Francisco. We'll be right back after this short break. Stay with us. Day one of three days of wall-to-wall -wall live coverage. Oracle Open World live in San Francisco. We'll be right back. I'm John Furrier. We'll be right back.